Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. I'm going to be very upfront with you about the start of this painting process. I was in a bit of a funk on the day that I created this painting. I was feeling anxious because I had um, an important medical appointment coming up and I didn't really know what to expect and I was feeling a little bit nervous about it. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to creating, sometimes, especially when I'm in a bit of a funk or if I'm not feeling well or if something is causing stress or anxiety or even when I'm feeling sad, it's really hard for me to create. And it's funny because at the same time, I know that doing so will probably help to lift me from my fog, my funk, or even bring a little bit more joy if I'm feeling sad. Yet it's difficult for me to do so. It's almost akin to when you know if you go outside and go for a walk, you'll feel better. <laughs> but you're really having a hard time motivating yourself to get out and get some exercise. It's a little bit like that, I guess. That's the, the best way I can compare it. So on this day I was struggling and yet I knew that if I just got to painting I would probably be able to help lift or calm some of my anxiety and I would start to feel better. But in doing so I really almost needed to force myself into the process and, and that's a bit of a strange thing for me because when I'm forcing myself to do something it feels almost like what's the point? <laughs> I, I don't typically like to, to like I, I mentioned before, should on myself or force myself to do things if I'm really not feeling it. But there are certain things in life, especially things that we know will help us feel better, like painting, like exercise, that sometimes it's actually good for us to force ourselves. So this painting process started off that way. And since I was kind of forcing myself to get the creative process going, I needed a source of inspiration. And so I had found this um, color scheme in a bit of Native American art that I saw that included the colors that are in the background right now. And I loved how the colors all looked together. I had a feeling they wouldn't necessarily blend well together, but I was feeling like I just was going to try it out, see how it went, and if it worked out, great, and I was hopefully going to be able to work through it, but I also was giving myself permission today because of the way I'm feeling that I could walk away and do something else if I needed to do something else to help distract myself from the anxiety. Turns out, however, that the painting process was exactly what I needed, but it did start off rough, and I won't lie, the background for this painting is, <laughs> oh man, it, le it leaves something to be desired for sure. But I do love the colors individually, and I want to work through this. So I am giving myself full permission to make it ugly if it if this is what's going to come out <laughs> and ugly of course is all in the high in the eye of the beholder kind of like beauty is so right now it's not looking to me like it's a very beautiful background and you know i could leave it be and maybe if i left it be it might be a little bit better but for whatever reason, I need to sort of work through this anxiety and working through this anxiety means that I'm just going to keep putting paint on paper and I'll figure it out as I go along.
individually, all of these colors are absolutely beautiful. Right now, I think my biggest struggle is with combining them together. And since I was using water colors and I was using a lot of water, which I, I tend to like to do, of course the colors blended together. And sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it creates a bit of a muddy um, coloring. And then I added, you know, some Van Dyke Brown because I felt like I needed some, some darkness in there. <laughs> so, you know, I was creating mud and then I was adding a color that looks a little bit like mud. But I needed to work through it. And sometimes working through challenges, well, uh, let's not lie. Working through challenges in most instances is not necessarily pretty. It's messy. It's, um, for me, sometimes a very emotional process. And that doesn't usually come out looking what we typically tend to consider as beautiful. Yet there's some beauty in the process if we can just learn to appreciate it. And I'm no different than anyone else. I, I don't enjoy pain. I don't enjoy having anxiety. I don't enjoy going through challenges. Sometimes, you know, some challenges can be fun, but certain challenges, a lot of challenges in life, especially when they deal with our health or um, stressful situations, they're not what we quote unquote call enjoyable. And it's hard to look at them that way, but they are necessary. And so this background, as much as it is <laughs> messy and um, I'll even say I feel as though it is ugly at this point, it's part of my journey and it's part of me working through what I'm feeling today and I'm just going to try to embrace it to the best of my ability and see what I can make of it. So I ask you to please bear with me as I work through this messy part of my process and let's see if we can learn to see something beautiful in what we don't perceive as beautiful. There's a lot of water in this upper part of the painting right now and it's reminding me a little bit of um, the times when I used to do fluid art. I don't know if you're familiar with fluid art, but it's uh, basically a process of working with very fluid acrylic paints and letting the paint move and moving your substrate in ways to try and create different shapes and, and forms and um, I find there's something really kind of exciting about that process and it's kind of neat to see it happening 
not completely, but in some ways in this painting as well. I'm feeling ready now to say, okay, I'm done working on creating this little mess. <laughs> I think if anything, this is a very successful mess. And so I'm just going to let it dry and move on to the next portion of the painting in which I will really look to see what I find beautiful in the painting and I'll draw out those elements. I've pulled out my circle guide and I'm going to basically almost use it as a bit of a viewfinder. I'm going to look at the painting from a different perspective, focusing on areas that I actually like in the background. And I'm going to draw attention to those areas by drawing a circle around it using my circle guide. Even though the background as a whole seems messy and muddy and not at all as bright and colorful as I generally like my backgrounds to be, there is still a lot of brightness and beauty within the background. And by using my circle guide, I can really pinpoint those areas that I like. I can draw attention to them. And then I can work on eliminating in some ways or finding a way to make the rest of the background work better by adding some paint to it. Initially, I thought the best thing to do would be for me to come in with a very dark color of paint uh, and in the paint I had in mind was a color called Blackberry from one of my Decadent Pies set, sets and I love that color and it would have done a really good job covering up the rest of the background but I decided that instead of fully covering it with dark color that I would prefer to come at it with a more transparent color. So I am pulling this blue from my Thalo blue in my palette and I'm making sure it's somewhat watered down and I'm painting around the shapes. Now some areas are going to be a little bit darker because when I'm combining that Thalo blue with the other colors underneath, they're going to, it's going to make for a very dark area and I am completely okay with this. In fact, as it's going along, I'm starting to feel hopeful about this painting because I'm starting to see that those beautiful shapes that I drew circles around are starting to stand out and I'm actually using the phthalo blue to make the colors around those shapes less apparent and sort of like push them back if you will um, but they're gonna still show through a little tiny bit and there's something about that that I like it's like reminding me of the journey to get through you know getting through the darkness to get to seeing the light I guess <laughs> it may sound corny I don't know <laughs> but that's sort of the way I'm looking at it from a metaphorical standpoint getting through the darkness to see the beauty that comes through with the light. I've decided to add a little bit of salt in those areas where I've added the blue. The paint is pretty dark and the background is also pretty dark so it'll leave a little bit of texture I think in the painting but it won't be overly obvious and I think it'll add a little something nice to the painting in the end. At this point, I'm feeling called to start refining my shapes and so I've pulled out my circle guide again and I'm going to be using my dual tip zig marker in black um, in order to draw some circles around my shapes and give them a little bit more dimension and also, like I said, define them a little bit more 
so they don't look um, as messy around the edges, if you will. It's an interesting thing how just drawing a dark circle around, around that shape already makes it look so much better. And looking at these shapes now, I'm really getting the feeling of distant worlds, alien planets floating in space in our universe. Um, and I'm starting to feel not only more hopeful about this painting, but I'm starting to even get a little bit excited about it because I love those planetary shapes coming to life. Now I've switched to using the finer tip of my zig marker and I'm going to come in and add some lines. I'll use uh, some of the techniques from my way of doing neurographic art in this painting, but the background is quite dark so I don't think these elements are going to be overly obvious, but I do want to create them. Black will be of course the darkest value in this painting and it, it'll still be there to be seen, but like I said, the background is still pretty dark. So um, it's, I don't think it would be useful for me to create a lot of these elements in this painting. Still, I think it will add a little something. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it helps also to keep the process going for me. And sometimes that's what I need. I need to keep the process going by doing something simple that will then inspire me for my next thing or my next mark that I want to create in the painting. To color in those little areas that I have just created, I always find it easiest for me to work with my brush pen. And so I've pulled it out and I'm just going to work on refining these lines and coloring in those little shapes that I've created. And once I'm done with this, I'll move on to the next step of the painting process. And really as I'm going along, 
it's um, something that initially started out with me not feeling so great and feeling anxious. I'm actually now at this point having fun and I'm seeing potential in my painting and I'm starting to even feel excited with the process. It's, uh, and that's why it's so good for me to have sort of quote unquote forced myself to work on this painting today because I managed to shift things around for myself. As I mentioned before, there's quite a bit of darkness in this painting already. And so it's time for me to add some elements that will actually brighten things up. And I'm going to do this by adding some light value contrast using my Tropical Sunrise Magic Green. Just to create a focal point and do something a little bit different, for the last circle I'm going to use some star gold. You know me, I normally love my star gold and I do like it in this painting, but right now it feels like it's a little bit too yellow next to the rent the rest of that yellow that's already in the painting. So I'll have to do something or I'll want I want to do something to sort of change things around. But for now I'm gonna come in just with some watered down gesso and I'm gonna add little splatters of paint 
that will look like distant stars in the universe. Once I'm done adding these little splatters and dots of white paint into my background, it'll be important for me to make sure I let it dry fully before moving on to the next step. This paint, even though it's watered down gesso, will still take a little bit more time to dry and if I put anything over it before it's fully dry, I'm probably just going to end up spreading those white dots and that's the last thing I want to do. Slowly but surely this painting is starting to feel like it's coming together for me and I think adding some of this midnight blue will definitely help the process along.
I think my focal point still needs a little something at this point and I have decided to add some Indian orange around that circle of magic green that's in the center. Initially I was thinking I could add some midnight blue in there but there's already quite a bit of that color in the painting and so I think this Indian orange is going to help to create something a little different that will draw the eye and add a little bit of visual visual interest and I'll also spread it a little bit more in the, the rest of the painting um, by creating more of these little dots and I think it'll help to really complete the painting. Now that I'm feeling happy with my painting as it is, it's time for me to pull off the tape and let's have a closer look. I really like the look of the crisp white edges that the tape leaves when I'm pulling it off. And oftentimes it's kind of like the finishing touch on the painting, if you will. It kind of helps to bring everything together and it makes the painting look finished, if you will. I really like how this little painting ended up turning out. It uh, was a journey. It definitely was a journey, um, but it's been really fun. And what I love most about it is that it was a challenge for me to start this process, but it really helped me shift things around for myself. And in this painting, I see a lot of hope and a lot of joy. And I also see the darkness that I had to travel to get through um, to the other side so that I could actually experience this hope and this joy. And the whole thing is beautiful to me. I hope this little journey of crossing through the darkness to get through the other side where the light shines brighter can inspire you to do the same with your creative process. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and don't forget, happy creating!